Hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today we are animating gradients in Adobe After Effects. This tutorial is inspired by a question from Chris Blaylock, a very chill dude and talented designer in the San Francisco Bay Area. He had this logo with a gradient in it, and he wanted the gradient to wash over the logo before settling into the final branded configuration of the original logo, you know, for brand reasons. Now basically he was looking for a seamless transition from a washing looping gradient that would fade out into the original, but for it to be better than doing a crossfade of some kind. So I'm going to show you how we can make that happen with a few effects, a little bit of a shift in how we think about colors and gradients in After Effects, but fair warning, I am going to be bouncing back and forth between Illustrator and After Effects for some of these concepts, so just a bit of a heads up on that. But if that sounds good to you, let's get into the tutorial and start animating some gradients. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, get lost in creativity. If you're looking to learn about animation, they've got plenty of classes on that, as well as design, photography, illustration, film, all great classes taught by experts at the top of their craft. Experts like DKNG Studio, they are true masters of Adobe Illustrator and Vector Graphics. And since we're gonna be talking about things inside of Illustrator in this tutorial, I thought it'd be a great idea to tell you about their course geared towards workflow in that app. I use Illustrator to make most assets that I end up putting into motion for clients, so it's really an invaluable tool to be fluent and effective in. And I think that the gentlemen behind DKNG do a great job getting people up to speed with their class. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can start exploring your creativity. And a big thanks to Skillshare for helping support the channel. So let's begin by looking at a logo with a gradient on it. Here's a simple one that I've made just as an example. We have a shape with a hole in it and a gradient is filling in that shape. You can access a gradient's details here in the gradient window. And as you can see, we have some knots and those define what the gradient is. So if we took this logo, bring it into After Effects by importing the .ai file, we get layers like this in After Effects. So if we wanted to animate the gradient in some way, how are we gonna make that happen? Well, your first instinct might be to convert this to a shape layer, and we'll see how that goes. Oopsie doodle. Clearly, that's not gonna be very handy for us. Undo, undo, undo. The gradient information doesn't pass from AI to AE because they fundamentally understand and generate gradients a little bit differently. Using an extension like Overlord can get us closer. As you can see here, it looks like the data comes over pretty nicely. This gradient is now defined by two points that we can move around, but that's not really gonna get us the looping, washing over vibes we're after, and we could edit the knots of the gradient itself, but let's put that aside for now, because even if we use the very powerful Overlord extension, it's going to fall down with more complex gradients like we're going to get into later on. Lots of oopsies happening here. So that's our problem. So to get around these limitations, here's a method we might deploy. Let's call it the scrolling method. We can start by making a long comp of just the gradient that will move behind the shape so it appears to wash over it. In this case, the gradient is linear and runs from blue to red. So in Illustrator, I'm gonna take that gradient and apply it to a rectangle that is the same size as the original logo, and that'll create one of the panels I need to make this illusion happen. Then I'm gonna duplicate it, flip it, duplicate it again, and create this kind of a panel that runs from the original to something in between back to the original. I might even stretch out this connective part in the middle or change it in some ways. So long as in the end, I come back to the duplicate image of where we started, we're gonna make a loop. Depending on the complexity of your gradient and the angle of it, this might be different for you and this method will have limitations, but bear with me here. Back in After Effects, we're gonna take this kind of ribbon layer and place it behind that first layer. Then we're gonna use that first layer to define the shape as an alpha mat for that ribbon layer, and then we just move the ribbon around with position until we reach the looping point. Play it through and it looks pretty seamless and accurate. As long as we land on the gradient that we're meant to see in the final, we could have all kinds of wacky things going on in the ribbon. And if you're animating this on, it doesn't really need to loop at all. But thinking about your logo asset as just a shape that defines where we can see this ribbon is going to free you up to make all kinds of changes to that ribbon itself as long as we eventually come to the final arrangement. However, this may not have the flexibility you're looking for, having to make a static layer that just translates might not get you where you want to go. So let's look at another idea. 
Because all colors that are represented digitally can be transformed with effects, we're going to call this next thing the effects method. And nothing typifies this kind of transformation more than the colorama effect, classic colorama. We're going to apply the colorama effect to something we can remap. So we're going to remap the values of pixels into the new arrangement. And more critically to our needs, we can slide the phase of that remapping around. So we need to make a new logo, or at least a different logo. I'm working with a linear gradient that runs from blue to red. However, I'm going to need to make a copy of this and change that to run from just black to just white because they're very certain and regular values to remap. Then I'm going to put that layer into After Effects. Then the magic happens when we drop Colorama onto this situation and remap those black and white inputs to specific gradient outputs. So I will place one knot up here at the top of the circle and one at the bottom of the circle because those are our specific colors, the specific knots that we can take from Illustrator. And you'll notice though, we don't have a linear gradient. So it looks like a reflected gradient. That's because black and white endpoints exist on this circle right next to each other up at the top. So think of them like zero and 360 degrees. But we have markers here at zero and 180 degrees. But if I want this to loop seamlessly, I need to have this subtle gradient between the poles. So to get around this, I'm just going to chop the values in half of our actual starting input. I'm going to do that with a levels in this case, taking that black point down by half. And so you can see that the gradient is now running from 50% gray to white, which means that that's getting remapped to the two values that I wanted. And then I just have to animate the phase. And as you can see, we are looping through. <laughs> Look at it go. Because the phase is basically shifting all of those input values over by a certain amount. And doing so in this case is just taking us around the circle. But the fun doesn't stop there. Because Colorama is remapping black and white values, we can simply create other values using generative effects like fractal noise, for example. So above all of this in the stack, I'm going to drop a fractal noise in here, setting it to be quite large in scale, and then maybe adding a, a blur in there so it's nice and indistinct. Now you notice after blurring the nice alpha bounds, the logo get a little weird. So I'm going to use the set channels effect to restore the original alpha by setting it to reference the layer itself. And it'll just use its original alpha to override anything we're doing to it. So you can even put that at the end of the stack if you want to clean up the alpha to the original crisp edges. Now I animate the fractals evolution over time as well as animating the phase over time. And in the end, I'll just fade that fractal down with the opacity property on the fractal noise itself itself, which will fade off only that effect so that this can subtly return to the normal looking gradient that it was supposed to be in the original. It's all about making procedural changes that we can feather on and off to return us to the original in a seamless way. As an aside, this is also a fun way to make kind of psychedelic effects. Let's say we have that fractal noise back again, and on the colorama, I'm going to tighten up the knots, or maybe I remove interpolation entirely to make these really harsh distinctions between the colors. And then I'm going to have that input phase rolling through, so it's it's going, it's looping. But you can kind of see how it looks like waves maybe flowing over a surface. Well, if we increase the number of loops, the number of times we cycle through that output phase, we can get some kind of trippy stuff going on here that looks much more like radio waves or maybe topographical scanning. This is a lovely way to make some very visually interesting textures or trippy psychedelia. Combine that with the evolution of the fractal. Now we're getting into some lava lamp territory. Just something to think about before we move on to some other techniques here. Now, there are other limitations to think about, especially when we start to bridge into more complex forms of gradients, three colors, four colors, uh, freeform mesh gradients. The more complex and specific this gradient is, the more difficult it is to kind of reverse engineer and then modify the individual parameters of it. Just have a look at this freeform gradient with, with many colors and methods combined into one gradient that a designer might hand off to us for animation. <laughs> Yipes, thanks a lot. But maybe, just maybe, we can combine some ideas together here to get this moving. I want to start with getting the values of all the knots. So I'm going to grab those hex code numbers from the gradient panel in Illustrator. I like to do this rather than using the eyedropper because I might miss the mark, I might be off by a little bit. And if this is a branded piece, I want to be accurate. In the best case scenario, there's a design document with all these just in a list. <laughs> what a dream that is when it happens. But I'm going to be using this to create a bunch of shape layer circles that are the same color as the knots and roughly arrange them to be close to the kind of the final resting place. Then I'm going to use a blur effect to kind of feather out the edges. Again, just trying to get close. 
Then I'm going to set keyframes for position, scale, probably for the blurriness as well, since this is where they all need to end up. And then I work backwards and get them moving all over the place, scaling up, scaling down. I might even parent them to a null to have that scale up or down over time, or maybe parent some of them to one null that scales up and one null that scales down, just really getting wacky with it. Maybe rotate the nulls while we're at it, just to get some directed chaos in here. But when this is pre-composed and then we use the original as the alpha mat, the impact is much more nuanced and interesting. And we can also just fade the whole thing off if we want to return to the exact original. And while it may seem like a very abstract way to make a gradient, it's also just using the same method that the freeform gradient in Illustrator is using. We're making knots, or in this case circles, and we're fading them into each other and moving them around. And all right, how about just one more, one more before you go. Let's bring Colorama back into the mix. If I take all of those knots, all of those circles, those faded circles that I have whirling around, and I'm gonna set those to be black, white, and gray. Now I'm going to apply Colorama, which will remap those values to our branded gradient knots. So we've got the Colorama applied to the pre-comp and we've got these extra knots displayed around the output phase. Now we're able to kind of get the best of both worlds. I can animate the phase, moving that around. I can animate the knots themselves. What proportion of each color are we gonna be representing? And it brings us an extra level of control to this chaos that we can push all of these things one way or the other. So hopefully this can bring a little bit of art direction, a little bit of controlled chaos to your project, <laughs> hopefully keeping you on brand and on time and give you a lot of methods to solve these problems. Well, this is kind of just the tip of the iceberg of ideas, I think. We didn't even talk about using different blending modes on these orbs or getting different kinds of interactions in here, or even using other effects to warp and modify the gradient like a vector blur or all kinds of great things. Everything really just becomes a base for something else to build on, but I hope that this gives you a starting place to think about animating gradients maybe in a new way and unlock some creative options for your projects. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Evan Abrams. If you want to find more of me around the internet, I'm at EC Abrams pretty much everywhere. If you want more of this stuff in your life, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single one. And if you have any trouble with any of the stuff we talk about on this channel, let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you out as best I can. If you like this kind of thing but live, then why don't you check me out on Twitch and on Behance. So we got live shows going on every weekend over there. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So until next time, stay creative, be kind to each other, and I'll see you all around the internet.